the moment that everybody was waiting for. We have been talking about DRBFM for a while for now. It is time to look at the big picture of DRBFM and take an actual look towards a template of a DRBFM worksheet and a couple of examples to understand exactly how we build DRBFM for a certain change or a certain product. So DRBFM as a big picture can be summarized in this infographic. Firstly, you have a change. It's kind of a closed box. You don't know what's waiting for you. You have a change that needs to take place in your product or in your system. And this change need to be studied and visualized and detailed as much as possible to be able to eventually deliver a durable product that customers can be happy with and that can get you back revenues with as least headaches as possible. So you have your change, you already decided what is changing in your product and next you will go with visualizing the old versus new design. You use all the tools and all the expertise that you have in your organization in order to visualize what happened between the old or regular design or current design versus the new design that we're trying to achieve. You put all your designs in 3D uh, kind of modeling and trying to break down all the exploded views, all parts, subparts and assemblies and identify where the change happened between the old and the new design. Next, as we learned, you go to your change comparison list. So you create a list of all the changes happening in writing. So this way you can compare part A versus part A prime, part B versus part, part B prime, and what happened in all those details. Then you go with your hierarchy diagram. How is your team uh, handling those parts or systems and which and who is, is handling what and so on. Then in that same sheet, you are creating the functions list. So you are telling each part been mentioned in the hierarchy diagram, what is the function of that part and how does it play in the overall assembly of the system? And you go to one of the big steps in your DRBFM sheet after the visualization is the change matrix. So in change matrix, you are putting together the functions list and the change comparison list and identifying all possible concerns or confirmed concerns. Then you discuss those concerns through a design review uh, series of meetings with design review participants list. So by that time you are creating your participants list and mentioning who will handle uh, which and which kind of expert do I need in order to review those concerns or potential concerns. When you finish those meetings, it could repeat over and over again in the design review. You could go back as well to the previous steps in order to fix some, uh, some of the problems that the design review members are recommending then when you are ready to do that, you move to the A rank sheet. And this sheet is telling you and listing all the confirmed problems or concerns in your system or in your product and the ways to solve those problems. So you start to implement the root cause analysis for each concern and uh, the processes to overcome that concern and being able to deliver a durable product. So after the A rank, it's kind of these two steps are two in one. You could, you could find it either dedicated in a separate tab in Excel sheet, or it could be combined with the A rank sheet. So mainly you're doing A rank sheet, listing all your confirmed concerns out of the change matrix. And uh, the third important step in the DRBFM is the root cause analysis, which is known in the DRBFM community as a five wise analysis. So you're asking why each concern is a confirmed concern and why it's happening and being able to dig down all the way to the root cause of the problem or of the concern. When you do that, you do again a group of design review meetings with the experts and the related team members and trying to overcome those root causes 
and probably go back to your change list from there whenever you are able to clear out that concern and solving all the problems related to that concern and if the experts are telling you this concern is not a concern anymore you go back to your change list and you remove that concern and you go forward with the process again and eventually the drbfm expert from your organization will do the drbfm scoring sheet and this sheet is telling you how good did you apply the drbfm throughout the product development all the way from the moment you decided to do the change all the way down to the product delivery so he does scoring and he can tell you what is the mark that is being achieved three over four two over four and so on that's been achieved for the rbfm process and if it's a passing score or no if it's not then you want to go back and solve the problems that you had to be able to raise that score and kind of do a more thorough drbfm process if it is passing then uh, you are ready to go ahead and do the production for your part it depends on the part sometimes you go ahead with your design or go ahead with your part production or go ahead uh, with your testing and so on so in this way by following those straightforward steps and detailed processes you're able to deliver a durable product to your customer and the uh, managers would be happy by delivering a durable product that is profitable eventually with as least problems as possible and the customer is happy to have a durable and a long-lasting product and easy to use in the same time.